This past weekend, we had both the Xfinity Series and the Craftsman Truck Series at Pocono. Corey Heim continues to dominate the Truck Series, and the Xfinity Series has an epic battle of speed and strategy. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything, NASCAR. So like I mentioned at the open, we had two races being the Xfinity Series and the Craftsman Truck Series both at Pocono Raceway this past weekend. Pocono Raceway also known as the Tricky Triangle, a race that usually has a bunch of strategy involved in it. Some drivers even describe it as like racing at a road course because of all the different strategy scenarios you can go through. The fact that you can also pit early at stage end. You won't go a lap down. A lot of road course aspects in here at Pocono. A very different track on the schedule. Some drivers find much success and some seem to really struggle their whole careers. But let's start with the Craftsman Truck Series at Pocono. The Truck Series is back after a couple weeks off, this time in Long Pond, Pennsylvania. Honestly, this race was not quite what I expected. Honestly, it wasn't really noteworthy. I was kind of going into this weekend expecting and thinking that the Truck Series would actually be the best race of the weekend. And honestly... It wasn't that exciting, but there was some exciting moments, and most of those moments were provided early on as we had great battles from Christian Eckes and Corey Heim. These two have been the best drivers, clearly, in the truck series this season. You got Corey Heim, you got Christian Eckes, and then you got everybody else way down at the bottom. So these two early provided a lot of entertainment. I think pretty early on, it was a little noticeable that the slightly better car was Corey Heim, the driver of the 11 for Tricon. I feel like I talk about him every week. He is just such a fantastic young talent. Heim was pretty dominant of this race. But one thing that we were hearing throughout the event, that there was a threat of rain. There was a potential that we could have some rain during the race. Corey Heim would go on to win the first two stages, and then we finally got that impending rain right near the end of this race with only a couple of laps to go. Everybody had to pull it down pit lane. NASCAR siding on the side of caution when it comes to this. They came down pit lane, and a couple of minutes later, they were like, all right, it looks like it is clearing up. We are going to go back onto the track. Well, they did a couple of pace laps. I think they only did two pace laps, taking it from eight laps to go to six laps to go in the event. And then it started to rain a little bit harder once again. So then NASCAR told the drivers to come back down pit lane and that they weren't going to count those laps that they ran on the racetrack. And at this time in the event, there was a couple of drivers who were pretty close on fuel. So you just had... All these drivers drive around the track two times, and Pocono's not like Martinsville. It's not some su some super short track. It's over two miles long, one of the biggest tracks on the circuit, and you had them all pace around two laps at the very end, and they were almost willing to just say, hey, those, those two laps, they, they didn't count because we never got back racing. We had the red flag. I think it has something there. I think there is a rule in place that was recently put in place in the last couple of years that I've heard referenced. I don't know the exact in and outs of this rule to be exact. And to be honest, I don't think anybody should need to because I, if, if that rule is in place, I think it's a silly rule. And I think NASCAR thought it was silly too because they immediately went back on that and they were like, so those laps will count. So it ended up being six to go. They finally went, Green flag racing at the very end, three laps to go. Had then had a green white checkered finish, where Corey Heim just just drove away. Corey Heim just drove away and won the race fairly easily at the end of that race. Did not have a big challenge at the end. 
So I'm going to say my catchphrase for the millionth time. It's always Heim time in the Craftsman Truck series. Whoa, whoa. Ah, ah, he said it. He said it. Ah, ah, there it is. There it is. Let's talk a little bit about Corey Heim. I consider him one of the best young talents in our sport right now. I'm so impressed by his race craft, his racing IQ, his overall speed. He's just... He's the whole package. He is the whole package. And I've been waiting to see him promoted. Because even when he's raced in that Sam Hunt car, he has performed. He's usually up in the top 10, even up in the top 5 at times. And we've seen Tyler Reddick in that car. And he puts in around a similar, maybe not even as good of a performance as Corey Heim has been doing in that number 26. And there has been some rumors going around as of late that it sounds like the Heim time will continue in the Craftsman Truck Series next season. Because it just sounds like he's not going to be able to get any rides, whether it's the Cup Series or the Xfinity Series. Maybe Sam Hunt has an offer on the table for him for Xfinity. But hearing this news is extremely disappointing. I I'm not sure what's going on. Corey Heim, in my opinion, should have been promoted last last season to either Xfinity or the, even the Cup Series with Zane and Hosevar because he's he's arguably better than both of those drivers, Zane Smith and Carson Hosevar. But he just has no deals on the table, it sounds like, when it comes to the Toyota program. And one of the things that I have heard, because I've always said, oh, why doesn't he just go to... Joe Gibbs Racing, he seems like a perfect fit over there. I don't know what is going on over there. I'm not exactly sure. I remember hearing on Door Bumper Clear maybe a month, month and a half ago. At this point, they were talking about Corey Heim and how high his potential is and why he's not getting rides. And apparently, well, I don't know if there's beef per se, but it just sounds like it's a for sure thing that he's not going to Joe Gibbs Racing. That's just never going to happen from what it sounds like. Whether that's Corey Heim having a bad relationship with Coach Gibbs or Ty Gibbs or whatever the case may be. I'm not exactly sure. But it seems like he has no potential future of going to Joe Gibbs Racing. Which sounds kind of ridiculous to me. Because like I said, I think he's the best. one, Not the best young talent. I would probably give that to Connor Zilich, but he's one of the best young talents in NASCAR today. And the fact that he's not being considered for any Cup Series rides, I'm even hearing now, because I was thinking, oh, maybe he'll get the third 2311 car. I even made that prediction in my Silly Season predictions. But it sounds like even if 2311 gets a third car for next season, snags another charter, sounds like Riley Herbst is probably going to get that seat. Because he has that monster sponsorship. I just honestly, uh, I don't know. This is like the case in point when it comes to modern NASCAR and sponsorships and politics within the sport. It's very, very unfortunate to see because Corey Heim is one of the best young talents out there. And obviously it seems like he's rubbed somebody wrong, somebody wrong when it comes to the Toyota program. I'm not exactly sure. In my opinion, what he should do is he should jump over to Chevrolet or maybe even Ford, try to find a team over there, whether it's Xfinity or the Cup Series, because he's talented and he's ready right now to race in the Cup Series, but he's just not getting the opportunities that I think he really deserves. Now that we've gone through that long spiel, congratulations to Corey Heim on winning a Pocono. Let's move on to the Xfinity Series race at Pocono. I was going into this race thinking that potentially it could finally be the day. I've said it before on this channel, huge Sheldon Creed fan. Started on the pole overall, ran a pretty strong day, but clearly he was not the best car of the day. The two best cars of this day were Justin Allgaier and Cole Custer. And we'll get to them having a battle here in a little bit. Early on in this event, though, Allgaier showed that he had great speed, was able to drive up to the front, take the lead, win the first stage. But then that happiness, that joy from winning that first stage quickly diminished 
as they had an equipment violation on pit road during that stage break, sending Justin Allgaier to the back of the pack. Very unfortunate. From that point forward, it looked like Cole Custer was the guy to be. Cole Custer taking over the race lead not too long after that. Custer, in my opinion, was the second fastest car all race long. Was really good out front, especially pulled away to a couple second advantage at one point. Really strong day from Custer. But late in this event, we had some cautions, which put a lot of drivers into a lot of different strategies we saw something very similar in the cup series event we saw all these different strategies when it comes to tires when it comes to fuel when it comes to all these different variances on what teams were doing during these pit stops well one of these strategies was justin allgaier trying to get back to the front of the field because in my opinion allgaier had the fastest car but to get to the front of the field he, he would have to be on slightly older tires. So Allgaier stayed out on those slightly older tires and he was also at risk of not making it on fuel at the end of the event. And at this point, this is when we had some fantastic battles at the end of this event with Cole Custer and Justin Allgaier, the two fastest cars all race long. We had, we had a bunch of very late cautions in this event. One of them I will be talking about in a minute but it ended up setting up i think our three lap shootout to end this event and it was cole custer versus justin allgaier one last time allgaier was able to clear custer and it looked like i thought i thought at that point allgaier was going to drive away but was really slow off of turn one i don't know if he just got real tight off the corner or was getting a little loose but he just did not look comfortable off of turn two custer was able to make a epic pass all the way down to the bottom even goes over the hump that's underneath like they have the yellow line right before you get to the wall he goes underneath the yellow line and just goes flying over that hump and takes the race lead and does not look back Cole Custer gets his first win on the season he was the points leader coming in he's been strong all year finally finally gets that first win has not won a race since he won the championship at Phoenix last year, and that was also the last time Ford won a race in the Xfinity Series, Ford getting their first win of the year as well. Cole Custer with this great performance, especially since he's technically looking for a job right now. At this point, I'm beginning to think that he is going to move up to the Cup Series just from hearing all these different personalities like Denny Hamlin this week. It almost sounded like he like halfway let the cat out the bag that Custer's moving up. I don't know where he's going to go. Probably that Haas factory team. Maybe that final front row motorsports stop. I would assume he stays with Ford. We'll have to see what happens. But Cole Custer has had a very consistent and strong season. It's been very surprising that he's yet to get to victory lane. But finally gets to victory lane, that first win of the season. I think he's probably going to be in the championship four for the Xfinity Series. Who knows what could happen the remaining of the season. But good job on Cole Custer. All right, I said I was going to talk about one of these late cautions that we had. I just want to briefly go over it because I just thought it was so ridiculous. I think all of you know what I'm about to talk about because I'm really fond of this guy. I'm going to talk about Shane Van Gisberg and getting completely run over by Sam Mayer. This is very disappointing for me to see. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of SVG and he was having one of the best races I've seen him have at an oval. I was I keep an eye on SVG every race. If there's anybody I watch throughout the whole entire event, it's Shane cuz I'm really interested cuz he always seems to improve a lot throughout the event. At the beginning portion of the event, he tends to be one of the slowest cars on the racetrack but by the end of the event his pace his lap times are usually in the top 15 if not even in the top 10 and at the end of this race he had the best strategy i think he had one of the freshest tires on the track near the end of this event was making passes drove himself up to the top 10 actually was looking to get a top 10 at pocono and sam Mayer was around 30 car lengths back and just completely sent it into the corner taking out Shane I've seen Shane take out Sam Mayer I think maybe even twice this season 
both at road courses. I don't I don't think it was payback from Sam Mayer. I just think he completely misjudged it or just completely overdrove the corner right there. But I don't know. You're you're a professional. That was a huge gap. Like I can understand if it was like a half a car length, but he had to be at least one and a half, two car lengths back of Shane Van Gisbergen and just levels him in the rear end going into the corner, ending Shane's opportunity at a great finish. But like I said, this has kind of been a back and forth throughout the season. Like I said, I don't think it was intentional, but these two tend to always find each other on the racetrack. I just find it kind of interesting. But give me your thoughts down below. What did you think? of the Xfinity Series race and the battle and the strategy that we had between Cole Custer and Justin Allgaier. Also, give me your thoughts on the Truck Series event. Were you also behind the fact that they decided to change their mind about not counting those two laps under yellow? Also, give me your opinion on Corey Heim. I think he should have a Cup Series ride or at least a high-quality Xfinity Series ride next year, but it sounds like he's actually going to be back at Tricon in the Truck Series next year. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.